Today is the main news from Korea. The mandatory COVID-19 test when entering Korea from abroad is expected to be abolished. The Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, KCDC, announced on the 28th that it is comprehensively considering the impact of the abolition of pre-entry testing on domestic quarantine, and plans to hold consultations with experts and related ministries this week. The Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention will also report the results of the review to the Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasures Headquarters, adding that the final decision will be made and announced. Those who are currently entering Korea must submit a negative confirmation of PCR test within 48 hours or rapid antigen test for experts within 24 hours prior to entry. In addition, PCR test results must be additionally received within one day after entry. With this in mind, some criticized the travel and tourism industry as to the burden of the cost of testing abroad before entering the country and the low effectiveness due to the short time interval between before and after entry. According to the Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, among the 38 OECD countries, only South Korea and Japan require pre-entry screening regardless of whether or not they have been vaccinated. However, from the 7th of next month, it is known that Japan will not conduct pre-entry testing for those who have received the third or more vaccinations. A delegation of the Korean government is visiting the United States amid a strong backlash over the IRA an inflation reduction law in the United States that excludes Korean electric vehicles from subsidies. According to the Ministry of Strategy and Finance, a delegation of the government, including the head of the New Trade and Order Strategy Office of the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy, the Director of the Bilateral Economics and Foreign Affairs Department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the head of the Trade Affairs Task Force Team of the Ministry of Strategy and Finance, will visit Washington, USA until the 31st. They meet with key figures from the U.S. administration and Congress to discuss the electric vehicle subsidy system among the inflation reduction law signed by U.S. President Joe Biden on the 16th. The government delegation plans to visit the Congress and major U.S. administration agencies such as the Trade Representative, the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Commerce to communicate our concerns about the revised electric vehicle subsidy system, the industry's position, domestic opinion, etc., and discuss future countermeasures. In addition, the delegation will hold a meeting with the automobile and battery industries that have entered the U.S. to check the response status of the Korean industry and discuss support measures at the government level. The delegation's visit this time is a preliminary consultation prior to the visit to the United States to attend the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework Ministerial Meeting, which is planned for next week. With the general manager's visit to the United States as an opportunity, discussions between the ROC and the U.S. authorities on the inflation reduction law will be upgraded to a higher level and will continue. Earlier last week, High-ranking diplomatic officials met with Daniel Kretenbrink, Assistant Secretary of State for East Asia and Pacific Affairs at the U.S. Department of State, who was visiting Korea, and conveyed their concerns about the inflation reduction law one after another. In particular, in an informal interview between Foreign Minister Park Jin and Assistant Secretary Kretenbrink, it was reported that the serious concerns of the ROC were conveyed in a relatively candid atmosphere. Minister Park is known to have expressed his opinion that it is difficult to accept the discriminatory treatment of Korean companies as they may violate the Korea USFTA and that concrete measures should be taken as soon as possible. In an interview on the same day, the South Korean Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs suggested that the U.S. give active support and attention to this issue in consideration of possible violations of U.S. international trade rules, negative impacts on Korean companies investing in the U.S., and concerns about impeding the establishment of supply chain cooperation between Korea and the U.S. strongly demanded. The domestic stock market opened lower and the $1 exchange rate rose to the 1,341 level as the U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell's stronger hawkish remarks than expected. The $1 exchange rate opened at 1,342.51 in the Seoul foreign exchange market on the 29th, up 11.21 from the previous trading day. The Kospi index fell 1.97% from the previous trading day at 2,432.06, and the Kodak index started at 780.481 down 2.74% from the previous trading day. As Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell expressed his strong hawkish will, some stocks are urging investors to reduce their weighting of growth stocks and reorganize their portfolios with a focus on defensive stocks. Chairman Powell did not give the market any expectations of monetary easing at the Jackson Hole Symposium, said an analyst at a securities firm. Chairman Powell said that if inflation is to be stable, we have to endure other pain, he said. He also emphasized that the need to balance supply and demand by shrinking demand was emphasized, he said. The researcher warned that the Fed will maintain its monetary policy stance for a while and advised against liquidity contraction. He said that after Powell's speech, major stock indices fell more than 3% from the previous day. He also said that it is necessary to prepare for accelerating quantitative tightening and economic contraction next month. Investors who cannot reduce their weight in stocks should drastically reduce the weight of growth stocks that do not perform well in the tightening environment and increase the weight of defense sectors. Meanwhile, Fed Chairman Powell sent a hawkish message to the market at the Jackson Hole meeting, the Fed's annual economic symposium, on the 26th, saying the fight against inflation will not stop. 
He said higher interest rates, slower growth and weakened labor market conditions would lower inflation, but at the same time cause some pain for households and businesses, but he said it would be necessary to maintain a constrained policy stance for the time being to restore price stability. The governor of the Bank of Korea said it is more difficult to end the rate hike than the U.S. The Bank of Korea Monetary Policy Committee is accelerating rate hikes after raising the base rate by 0.25 percentage points this month by a unanimous decision. The financial market puts weight on the base rate of the MPC at the end of the year at 3.00 percent. The governor of the Bank of Korea met with foreign reporters at the Jackson Hall Economic Policy Symposium hosted by the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City in Jackson Hole, USA on the 27th and said, the Bank of Korea can be said to be independent from the government, but it is not completely independent from the federal. Said. If the Fed continues to raise rates, there will be more devaluation pressure on our currency, he said. Said. The rise in domestic prices is mainly due to external factors such as energy prices, and international oil prices may rise again, said the Bach governor. Given its importance, it is too early to say that inflation has yet to peak. As long as the inflation path does not deviate from the current path, it is appropriate to increase the rate by 0.25 percentage points for the time being, he said. There are only two meetings left for the Monetary Policy Committee to decide the direction of monetary policy within this year, on October 12 and on November 24. If the MPC raises the base rate by 0.25 percentage points at the remaining two meetings within this year, it will rise to 3 percent. Given the possibility of an economic slowdown next year, experts who thought the monetary policy hike would end this year at 2.75 percent this year are now predicting that the rate will rise to 3.00 percent by the end of the year. The Japanese government sent an invitation letter to the ROC Navy ahead of the Maritime Self-Defense Forces International Fleet Ceremony to be held in Sagami Bay, Kanagawa Prefecture, in November of this year. The Yoon so administration is reviewing the details, holding a strand in the direction of sending South Korean naval vessels to the frigate ceremony. However, the issue of the rising sun flag used by the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force as a military flag is on the rise, and public opposition is expected. Conversely, experts are explaining that participation in the patrol ceremony is necessary, so a wise response from the Yoon so government is required. Article 29 of the Union Convention on the Law of the Sea states that a warship is a ship belonging to the armed forces of a country, having an external mark identifying the nationality of that country, duly appointed by the government of that country, and whose name is not in the appropriate military register of that country. It is defined as a vessel under the command of an officer listed on the equivalent list and staffed by a crew in accordance with regular military discipline. As a result, naval ships usually carry their own flag on the stern when sailing at sea. In addition, it is common to carry an additional naval flag symbolizing the country's navy when it is anchored in a port. The Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force is not technically a navy, but it is actually a navy. The problem is that they use the rising sun flag used by the former Japanese Navy as a symbol to symbolize them. In addition, Japan insisted that the Maritime Self-Defense Force ships carry the rising sun flag at international naval ceremonies on the grounds that they must fly the rising sun flag in accordance with the Self-Defense Forces Act. A professor at National Defense University said that the bureaucracy is a symbol of international cooperation and is an opportunity to cooperate with dozens of countries coming this time. A research fellow at the Korea Institute of Defense said that there is no real benefit to the parts that we claim against Japan such as participation in the patrol ceremony. He said that if he was rejected, he had to decide what to do and how to deal with it. There is also the view that it should be approached from a practical point of view. A military official said that if a ship sinks in the sea near Korea and rescues them, Japan is the country that can help the most quickly. He said that cutting off exchanges between the self-defense forces was a national loss. Considering all these factors, the government is expected to decide whether to participate in the frigate ceremony and conduct working-level discussions, as the public is strongly opposed to military cooperation with Japan. As there are many sensitive matters, how to tie them up is expected to be the first test to evaluate the Yoon so administration's diplomacy with Japan. The People's Power decided to create a new party constitutional rule that regulates emergency situations and launch a new emergency response committee. As the court did not recognize the party's emergency and suspended the duties of the Juho Young Emergency Response Committee, the current situation will be defined as an emergency. The idea is to form a new emergency response committee and hold the national convention as planned. Within the power of the people, the theory of resignation of floor leader Kwon Song Dong is spreading, saying that this procedure is a decision that ignores the court's decision. In addition, former party leader Lee Jun Sok said he would take additional legal action. The people's power has started to manage the situation with the new emergency response committee card, but it is expected that it will be very difficult to normalize the party. The people's power held an emergency general meeting of members at the National Assembly on the 27th and, after difficult discussions, decided to launch a new emergency response committee through revision of the party constitution and party rules as a response to the court ruling. At the same time, they urged the party ethics committee to promptly additional disciplinary action against former party leader Lee Junsok. 
as former party leader Lee Junso continued his strong remarks toward President Yoon and the party even after he was suspended from membership for six months, the power of the people is that former party leader Lee Junso will be completely expelled from the party so that he can no longer shoot at the party. Several middle-ranking lawmakers in the party were openly calling for the resignation of floor leader Kwon. Rep. Cho Kyung-kae held a press conference and urged the resignation, and Rep. Yoon sang hye and Rep. Kim Tae-ho, respectively, posted posts on Facebook demanding the resignation of floor leader Kwon. Regarding this, an official from the passport said, as the party's recovery is the priority, it is highly likely that floor leader Kwon will organize his position on his own once the new emergency response committee is launched. Rep. Lee jae myung was elected as the new leader of the Democratic Party of Korea on the 28th. New party leader Lee jae myung defeated his opponent, Park Young-jin, by a large margin in the national representative contest held at the Olympic Gymnastics Stadium in Seoul with 77.77% of the vote. In this Democratic primary, 40% of right party members, 30% of delegates, 25% of general public opinion polls, and 5% of general party members' polls were reflected and added together. Party leader Lee jae myung recorded 78.22% of the votes in the voting by the Rights Party, and received 70-80% of the votes from delegates, people, and general party members. The top priority given to party leader Lee jae myung who won a landslide victory, is to dispel concerns about with the democratization of the Democratic Party raised during the National Convention. It seems that a strong check against the Yoon seok yeol government will be possible only when the anti-Lee jae myung sentiment that still remains within the party is completely overcome and the factions are united. In order to do that, it seems that the key is to convince former President Moon Jae-in, who is the head of the pro-Moon Jae-in camp, which clashed during the party leader election process. As international natural gas prices soared and the $1 exchange rate skyrocketed, the possibility of another hike in city gas rates increased. When Korea Gas Corporation imported gas at a high price and sold it at a low price, the loss alone exceeded 5 trillion won, so the government decided to raise the city gas rate and is currently discussing the extent of the increase internally. As factors for raising electricity rates are piling up, such as the annual deficit of KEPCO is expected to reach 30 trillion won this year, the pressure on the price increase from utility rates is expected to continue for the time being. According to the government and energy industry, the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy will raise city gas rates in October and is discussing the level of increase with the Ministry of Strategy and Finance. The city gas fee consists of the raw material cost, which is the import unit price of LNG, a raw material for power generation, and the wholesale and retail supply cost, which is the sum of the supply cost and investment fee of wholesale and retail suppliers. The Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy plans to raise the standard fuel cost, which is linked to the fuel cost when the settlement unit price is raised in October. The Korea Gas Corporation, Kagas, is trying to recover the loss by raising gas rates as the accumulated receivables grew to 1.8 trillion won while importing LNG, a raw material, at a high price and supplying it to the public at a low price. However, as receivables of Kagas exceeded 5 trillion won due to a recent surge in gas prices, the existing measures alone were insufficient. It is reported that it has decided to raise the standard raw material cost as well considering that it is difficult to resolve the receivables with only a small increase in the settlement unit price in October. It was found that the amount of embezzlement of executives and employees of financial companies with billions of salaries reached 170 billion won over the past six years. According to data submitted by a member of the National Assembly's Political Affairs Committee on the 29th from the Financial Supervisory Service, it was confirmed that a total of 327 cases of embezzlement of 170.4 billion won occurred at 78 financial institutions from 2007 to August this year. The amount of damage caused by embezzlement accidents in the financial sector decreased slightly from 14.4 billion won in 2017 to 11.2 billion won in 2018, but is showing a sharp increase to 13.1 billion won in 2019, 17.7 billion won in 2020, and 26.1 billion won in 2021. As of August of this year, the damage caused by embezzlement in the financial sector was estimated at 87.6 billion won. This is a six-fold increase compared to 2017. The financial sector with the largest amount of embezzlement was found to be banking. It was followed by banks with 89.4 billion won, mutual financial associations with 25.6 billion won, asset management companies with 16.7 billion won, and savings banks with 14.9 billion won. Wuri Bank had the largest amount of embezzlement by employees at each financial institution at 71.6 billion won. It was followed by Unit Nongi up with 15.3 billion won, Hana Bank with 6.9 billion won, Fisheries Cooperatives with 6.8 billion won, Credit Union with 6.1 billion won, Nongi Up Bank with 2.9 billion won, IBC with 2.7 billion won, KB Non Life Insurance with 1.2 billion won, Samsung Life with 800 million won, and Xinyan Bank with 700 million won. Taiwan has announced that it will take tough measures to shoot down Chinese drones that have frequently appeared in its military facilities. 
Taiwan's Jinmen Defense Command announced on the 28th that if a Chinese drone enters the sky, it will initially drive it out through a warning, and if the warning is ignored, it will shoot down immediately. It has been avoiding direct shooting at drones that have appeared in the past, but it will take a tougher response in the future. Taiwan's Ministry of Defense has also drafted a new drone defense system plan and said the system will be put into service next year. In addition to strengthening drone countermeasures on Jinmen Island, military tensions in the Taiwan Strait continue to rise. The U.S. 7th Fleet said on Twitter on the same day that two missile cruisers, Chancellorsville and Antonym, were passing through the Taiwan Strait, where freedom of navigation and overflight on the high seas is subject to international law. The 7th Fleet said, the passage through the Taiwan Strait demonstrates the United States' commitment to the free and open Indo-Pacific. China also deployed 23 military aircraft and eight ships near Taiwan on the same day. According to Taiwan's Ministry of Defense, seven of the military aircraft crossed the midline of the Taiwan Strait, and three entered the air defense identification zone in the southwest of Taiwan. Tesla CEO Elon Musk said that it is crazy for each country to shut down nuclear power plants, considering the national security situation, and insisted that each country increase the number of nuclear power plants. According to the New York Times on the 28th, Musk tweeted the day before, saying, countries around the world should increase nuclear power generation. Then, when a netizen criticized environmental activists opposing the construction of the nuclear power plant, he agreed with it arguing that some of the activists were sadly anti-human. Musk, who identified himself as a proponent of nuclear power, previously said in an interview with Business Insider, an economic media outlet in March, that the shutdown of nuclear power plants in Germany is completely insane, and that nuclear power plants should not be shut down and should be reopened. Musk has been openly insisting on the expansion of nuclear power plants since the 2000s, saying that nuclear power is necessary until renewable energy such as solar power is fully established. As ESIM sims that can use two numbers on one smartphone become available from the first of next month, KT is the first among the three telecommunication companies to offer an ESIM-only rate plan. KT announced on the 28th that it will launch a dedicated plan called Dual Number that uses ESIM and ESIM together. Unlike ESIM in the form of a physical chip, ESIM refers to a method of downloading a network connection information profile of a telecommunication company to a subscriber identification module built into a smartphone. In the case of Apple, iPhone XS, or later, and in the case of Samsung Electronics, Galaxy Z Fold and Flip 4 or later models support the dual SIM function that uses both ESIM and USIM at the same time. If you use KT's dual number service, you can use 1 GB of data for the second number for 8,801 per month. After using the built-in data, you can use unlimited data at a speed of up to 400 kilobytes per second. In addition, voice and text messages from the main number can be shared with the secondary number. Unlike the regular rate plan, the dual number plan does not have a contract. However, when subscribing to a regular rate plan other than a dual number plan, a monthly fee or contract burden may occur. Meanwhile, SK Telecom and LGU Plus announced that they were considering introducing an ESIM only rate plan. Netflix's new plan, which lowers the cost of a monthly subscription instead of watching ads, is expected to range from $7 to $9. This is half of the current most popular standard plan. According to Bloomberg, the new plan that Netflix plans to release is likely to include 4 minutes of ads per hour of streaming content. It is known that advertisements are highly likely to be included before and during the start of the content. Currently, the Korean price of the standard plan is 13,501 per month, and assuming that the price of the low-priced plan is halved, it will be about 6,701. Netflix has been aiming for a video streaming service without ads. However, as the number of subscribers decreased for the first time in 11 years in the first quarter of this year, the company was considering introducing a low-cost advertising plan to maintain its subscriber base. According to Bloomberg, Netflix is considering introducing the plan first in at least six regions in the fourth quarter of this year and expanding it globally next year. Netflix has recently become a hot topic by changing the female protagonist of the original Chinese original content partner track from a Chinese-American to a Korean-American. This seems to be due to the judgment that Koreans have an advantage in the box office than Chinese. It is said that China is very displeased. Netflix's new original TV show partner track, released on the 26th, is a drama depicting the challenges and growth of Ingrid Yoon a Korean-American woman who wants to become a partner lawyer at a large, conservative New York law firm. However, the original work is Chinese, and the main character is Chinese-American. Ingrid Yoon is a talented Korean-American who graduated from Harvard University Law School with a second degree. She's a six-year attorney at one of New York's best law firms. She's smart, but she's being discriminated against because she's Asian and female. The partner track tells the story of Ingrid Yoon's success in fighting such discrimination. As the group BTS held a free concert in October to commemorate the Busan Expo bid, local lodging establishments raised their lodging rates significantly, and the city of Busan announced a crackdown. The city of Busan said, from the 26th, an inspection team was formed and started to identify and guide the site. The city of Busan emphasized, 
the meaning of the concert to pray for the Buzan Expo is fading and the image of Buzan is being tarnished. As ambassadors for the 2030 Buzan Expo, BTS will hold a free publicity concert on October 15 at a special stage in Zhejiang-gun, Buzan. The concert is expected to attract 100,000 spectators. In response to this news, some lodging establishments cancelled existing reservations and raised the price more than 10 times to receive new reservations. On Facebook and INST Agram, a series of posts stating that the prices of accommodation facilities in Zhejiang-gun and Heyandi have skyrocketed. It is reported that the rate for a room with a sea view at some hotels soared to 2.75 million won per day, and to 1.65 million won for a room with a city view. On the day of the concert, there are some establishments that receive 3.5 million won per night. A short-form video of a student lying on the pedestal and filming a teacher immersed in class has spread online, causing outrage. On the 26th, a video of the 12-second problem was uploaded on TikTok. In the video, a male student at a boys' middle school in the Chungnam area was lying on the back of a female teacher who went up to the church and was teaching English. Soon after, she grabbed her smartphone and started filming the teacher from below. The students who watched this smiled as if it was fun, but did not stop the male student. The teacher who is being filmed continues the class while ignoring the students. The video quickly spread with over 60,000 views within six hours of being posted. Comments from netizens concerned about the fall of the school authority also continued. On the TikTok account where the video was uploaded, there was also a video of a male student taking off his shirt and talking to a female teacher during class. It is said that the school took action to take down the video after the controversy broke out. As fall is fast approaching, records of record lows in August were set in various parts of the country. On this day, the morning temperature in Seoul dropped to 16 degrees, and the high temperature during the day is not expected to exceed 30 degrees. According to the Korea Meteorological Administration, KMA, on the 28th, the lowest temperature in the nation this morning was 7 to 21 degrees. The morning temperature in Seoul also dropped to 16.1 degrees, about 5 degrees lower than the average temperature of 21.1 degrees. In some parts of Jiayongi Inland, Gangwon Inland and mountainous areas, northern Chungbuk, eastern Jeonbuk and northern Jiayongsangbuk do, the morning temperature dropped below 10 degrees. Daytime highs are expected to drop below 30 degrees. The Korea Meteorological Administration predicted the highest daytime temperature across the country on the same day from 24 to 28 degrees. The highest daytime temperatures were predicted to be 28 degrees in Seoul, 26 degrees in Incheon, 27 degrees in Chuncheon, 26 degrees in Gangneung, 28 degrees in Daejeon, 28 degrees in Jeonju, 27 degrees in Busan and 29 degrees in Jeju. As the heat of the heat wave is dissipating, fine dust levels are good in all areas, so it is expected that the weather will be good for going outdoors. Thank you for watching today. Please like and subscribe.